Today I want to talk to you about this article which has been published by the Washington Post. It was published on January 25th by Steve Mufson or was written by Steve Mufson. Bill Gates comes to Washington selling the promise of nuclear energy. I will leave a link to this uh, article in the description below. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a new format. Here I have redacted the, uh, the text and I have created a color code. So green is something I agree with, red is something I strongly disagree with, and orange is something to which I am slightly ambivalent or, you know, think that it's easy to fix. So let's get started. Bill Gates thinks he has a key part of the answer for combating climate change, a return to nuclear power. The Microsoft co-founder is making the rounds on Capitol Hill to persuade Congress to spend billions of dollars over the next decade for pilot projects to test new designs for nuclear power reactors. Now, the thing to take away here is that they are talking in plural. They're talking about designs and reactors. So the traveling wave reactor will be brought up. The molten chloride, the fast reactor will be uh, brought up. But I'm pretty certain that Bill Gates also means to uh, establish more funds for other reactors as well. Gates, who founded TerraPower in 2006, is telling lawmakers that he personally would invest $1 billion and raise $1 billion more in private capital to go along with federal funds for a pilot of his company's never-before-used technology, according to congressional staffers. Now, do note how the Washington Post frames this, never before used technology. Obviously, if you are trying to get funds for a, a pilot, that means never before used technology. So, you know, if you're, if you're talking about a pilot project, uh, it's kind of, you know, uh, obvious to the reader that it's never before used. So why use that in this, uh, in this stage? It's just purple prose to me. Nuclear is ideal for dealing with climate change because it is the only carbon-free, scalable energy source that is available 24 hours a day, Gates says in his year-end public letter. And with that, we all agree. But what I don't agree with is the problems with today's reactions such as the risk of accidents can be solved through innovation. I think that those risks are overblown, first of all. And secondly, yes, innovation has already have happened. And if you look at, for instance, New Scale, which will be mentioned later on, you can build light water reactors uh, which cannot melt down. There's also uh, metallic fuels that have much higher heat tolerances. So yes, um, on, on one side, I think that improvement is necessary. But on the other side, I also want to stress that current nuclear reactors are incredibly safe and uh, are being operated by people who are passionate about it. I mean, uh, I can speak from a personal experience with Heather Matheson and uh, Kirsten Murray Zeitz, who both work at the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant, and th these people are awesome and excellent and absolutely passionate about what they do. Let's continue. But many nuclear experts say that Gates's company is pursuing a flawed technology and that any new nuclear design is likely to come at a prohibitive economic cost and take decades to perfect, market, and construct in any significant numbers. Now, this is a total falsehood. By the way, I don't know who the nuclear experts are. Um... Uh, what do they mean by a flawed technology? Do they mean the traveling wave reactor? Do they mean fast reactors? Do they mean nuclear in general? It's totally obscure to me. I, I mean, I don't know what they mean in this sense. Um, prohibitive economic costs can be addressed. That's, a, that's a, mostly a function of the regulatory framework, the experience, and whether or not the supply chain has been established. 
And to construct in any significant numbers is a blatant lie. We can build enough light water reactors today. We can start building 50 light water reactors today. And we wouldn't run into any real supply chain shortages simply because we already have an established supply chain for most of the stuff that goes on in those reactors. Let's continue. Lawmakers are listening to him. Through the Energy Department, Congress approved $221 million to help companies develop advanced reactors and smaller modular reactors in fiscal 2019 above the budget request. But Gates and TerraPower, which received a $40 million Energy Department research grant in 2016, are looking for more. Well, this implies that the 40 million would have been sufficient to create the entire pilot project or I don't understand the entire, I, I do understand that the writer wants to show people that a lot of money is being poured into research. Although if you look at it from a total perspective, from the amount of energy that will be created once these technologies are completed, and you know the amount of money that is being poured into renewable research and the amount of money that is being poured into battery research and the amount of money that is poured, being poured into all energy technologies, 40 million is nothing. It's, it's not even a drop in the bucket. So basically i'm not i'm not really bothered by government trying to assist companies in developing new technologies that can in the end help humanity uh, overcome the challenge of climate change we continue with some democrats reconsidering opposition to nuclear energy dating back to the three mile island accident 40 years ago gates met with lawmakers from both parties including senators lamar alexander Rep republican from tennessee and diane feinstein democrat from california both senior members of the senate appropriations committee last month he had dinner with senator lisa murkowski republican from alaska and three other senators now there's nothing wrong with this i mean uh, no, no significant technology implementation goes without the support of governments nowhere in no way shape or form i even have to apply for permission to get solar panels on my own roof so i i don't see why this is a problem this is this is good and and, and if anything it shows that uh, people from both sides of the aisle are trying to listen to people who want to come with concrete suggestions that will, in the end, uh, help us overcome climate change. Now, we could also look at it from a gloomy perspective that, you know, some rich guy is lobbying uh, senators to support his company. You know, it's all possible. Um, I'm not really faced by that. Let's continue. Edwin Lyman, a nuclear expert at the Union of Concerned Scientists, said that Terra Power is one of many companies that is raising the public's hope for advanced nuclear reactor designs, even though they are still on the drawing boards and will remain unable to combat climate change for many years. I'm not going to I'm not going to deny that he's right at, at, in this case. I mean, many years I will I will contest many years. If if we look at new scale, I I I suspect that they will be able to build um, build many reactors by the mid 2020s. Uh, the same can be said for terrestrial energy, for instance. Mid-2020s, early 2030s, yes, that still sounds like many years. But in the meantime, we have stopgap technology. I mean, the U.S. has the AP-1000. There's the EPR. There's also simple boiling water reactors. I mean, they have. They have designs that have been established, of which they have built 100 or you know, there's a hundred reactors in the U.S. Just pick one design and build 20 of those. 
I mean, that's not too that's not too complicated to do. I mean, it can be done, and it can be done cheaply as well. I mean, the boiling water reactor is a pretty simple design. I mean, why the hell would you go to all these lengths to build, you know, AP one thousands or something like that? Well, you can build a simple boiling water reactor or a simple pressurized water reactor as Diablo Canyon. Uh, first of all maintain your plants and keep them running that's the that's the most important message that i've got to say here uh, we continue we think the vendors of advanced nuclear reactor power designs are saying they can commercially deploy them in a few years and all over the world lyman said we think that is counterproductive because it is misleading the public on how fast and effective these could be well, the question is, uh, are, he says, we think the vendors are saying. Do the vendors say that? I mean, I'm in, I'm in pretty close contact with some people at Terrestrial Energy. I consider uh, Canon Bryan, who is the chief, chief financial officer, to be a close friend of mine. And he never claims... He, he never made any such claims. He's very tentative. He says, well, first we need to overcome all the hurdles and then we have to, you know, none of them are saying that they can do it in a few years. All of them saying that they might be able to do it in a few years, but the regulations, you know, keep them from going for going forward as fast as they want so they're all pretty they're all pretty realistic and they all think that it's going to take years and not a few years so they are not misleading the public and the fact that lyman says this is is misleading itself Let's continue. Many nuclear power experts say that the technology Gates is promoting, called a traveling wave reactor, does not work as advertised, at least not yet. These designs require advances in fuel and materials technology to meet performance objective, a Massachusetts Institute of Technology report said last year. Again, this is... the. This is a total non-issue. The fact that there are, you know, um, the fact that we need material technology to be invented and such. I mean, let's do it. Start doing it. It, it, it doesn't mean that it's not worth pursuing. They they make it sound as if because we don't have the technology yet, we mustn't pursue it. That's the way it's framed. Terra Power has changed key elements of its design and has still not resolved critical problems, experts say. Well, if it's the traveling wave reactor, I think they're right. But I'm still not happy about it. I mean, the way it's framed. So let's uh, look at it from another perspective. Jonah Goldman of Gates Ventures stressed that Gates was not advocating for Terra Power alone. Gates thinks the United States has the best minds, the best lab systems and entrepreneurs willing to take risk, Goldman said. But what we don't have is a commitment on Congress's part. And that's exactly right. Jonah Goldman hits the nail on the head. I mean, it, it, these kinds of articles attribute to not having that commitment because they are constantly raising questions. And instead of, you know, like they do with renewables, oh, renewables are going up and it's uh, we're getting better technology by the day. Once nuclear tries to do the same thing, they're saying, oh, well, but there's a lot of questions unanswered. Yes, well, with renewable, the storage is unanswered. Battery storage is basically not going to solve the problem. I mean, we cannot build batteries in sufficient volumes and such. So I don't get it. Why is there this, this disconnect between the optimism for renewables and the optimism for nuclear? I mean, you should be optimistic about both renewables and, and nuclear at the same time if you're optimistic about technological innovation. We continue. In his letter, Gates praised Terra Power's traveling wave technology. He said it is safe, prevents proliferation, and produces very little waste, and that's cool if it can be done. Important selling points in Congress, which has not settled on the location of a site for long-term waste storage. Um, I'm on record saying that I don't want long-term waste storage. I want an interim waste storage at the nuclear sites 
put everything in dry casks and keep it there until you have new reactors that can use whatever is in there with whatever needs to be done. Let's continue. Alison McFarlane, former chairman of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, said earlier versions of fast breeder reactors have turned in a dismal performance. The United States built two small reactors at a government laboratory in Idaho. Japan built a commercial unit called Manju, and France built two called Phoenix and Super Phoenix, and all of them have been shut down. Now, I have added, forgets to mention the BN-800. So basically, this is just showing that experimental reactors, which they were, you know, have been shut down. Well, there's nothing, there's nothing strange about that, uh, aside from one of them having run over 30 years, if I'm not mistaken. And the BN-800 is commercially available and is being sold to China, albeit in a slightly different form. Three years earlier, Terrapower had unveiled an agreement to establish a joint venture with China National Nuclear Corp. to build a pilot reactor, but the energy department, in a move that seemed aimed directly at Terrapower, said it would deny new license applications or extensions to existing authorizations related to the Chinese state-owned company. Now, this is, this is all to do with, uh, with IP... Uh, you know, the, the whole row between Trump and China. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm not positive about it. I'm slightly ambivalent about it. I'm, you know, if America wants to do it, they should do it. They should not, you know, say, oh, you cannot develop your reactor in China while at the same time keeping the same company from developing their reactor in the U.S. If they want to, if they want to block them developing reactors elsewhere, they should help them build these reactors in the U.S. It's that simple. TerraPower has also been working with the energy department on another reactor. If it moved ahead, it could obtain federal funds for 60% of the cost of of a test reactor, Berkey said, that design would rely on molten salt as both coolant and fuel. TerraPower believes an advanced molten salt reactor could be more efficient and produce less waste than current models. And that, with that, we all agree. I mean, I, I think there's a general consensus between me and and you, my uh, my my subscribers, um, in our movement. Uh, the molten salt reactor it will eventually become the final iteration of the uh, nuclear reactor. And now we continue to something Lyman said. However, that technology was examined in different countries 60 years ago and abandoned. Lyman said the molten salt reactor was highly. Lyman said the molten salt was highly corrosive, so you need special materials for the reactor. That's an engineering problem they still have to confront. Now this conveys pure. Lyman is sucking this out of his thumb. I mean, first of all, why was it abandoned? Um, was it a technical impossibility? Was it a technical hurdle? Was it political pressure? Uh, were there other considerations? We do know to some extent that the choice for sh shuttering the MSRE was political. So, yeah, there were also some technical problems, but the people who were involved with the MSRE thought that those could be solved. And they ran the MSRE for years and years and years and without real problems. So this technology is proven. And it yes, it was abandoned, but does that mean that it was bad? This is a non sequitur. The political engineering problem still needs work too, though some surprising bipartisanship has taken place over the over the past year. An unusual coalition of senators, Sheldon Whitehouse, Democrat Rhode Island, Cory Booker, Democrat New Jersey, James M. Inhofe, Republican Oklahoma, John Barroso, Republican Wyoming, and Mike Capro, Republican from Idaho, sponsored legislation aimed at speeding up NRC reactor approvals and capping company costs. The Senate bill, the Senate passed the bill December 20th and the House on December 21st. 
So there you have it. I mean, we can write all the negative crap we want, but legislators are are passing legislation in a bipartisan way. I mean, this is supported by both Democrats and Republicans. We have finally found something that unites these two groups apart from, you know, there's all this stuff that that keeps these people divided and strongly divided and once you find this unifying thing which it clearly is nuclear you should embrace it so here's the final the final takeaway from the washington post uh, or here is the ending of the washington post for all nuclear designs both new and old the colossal the colossal expense of nuclear construction and the absence of a carbon tax remain obstacles yes they remain obstacles in the west the east have solved those problems they can build nuclear reactors in time and at cost i mean even the united arab emirates have managed to build a four unit nuclear reactor facility in time and on cost so it can be done in the west too it's just a matter of commitment we are not committed to doing that so here's the final sentence in the united states only one new reactor has been completed in three decades two more were shelved in 2017 two others in georgia are running wildly behind schedule and over budget with current costs running around 27 billion more than double the original estimate and that's how we end an article about bill gates trying to secure a future for a new reactor design we are going to say well we are going to cast doubt we are going to cast a massive shadow over it and we are going to say well it's not going to happen because this 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 and this this is not a balanced article this is an anti-nuclear article and i don't agree with it so what do i take away from this article so here are the pros and cons i have put them in here on the side um i think it is a pro that bill gates wants to improve he wants to create a better reactor i also think simultaneously that that's a con because the reactors that we have are incredibly safe and work perfectly fine Um, another pro is he's seeking government involvement and he knows that we cannot do it without government involvement now that's a con at the same time because people are going to say aha see you want money from the government and that's negative but they forget about all the other technologies that want that want money from the government so that's a little bit hypocritical now a pro is and this is unheard of he brings his own money He's willing to bring two billion to the table. I mean, come on. Who brings two billion to the table to build a test reactor? Nobody does it. Another con is it it's partially untested technology, especially if we are looking if we are looking at the traveling wave reactor, it's partially untested reactor. It's partially untested technology, but also if we look at the molten salt reactor, it's partially untested re- technology. So we need to test it, and it's going to take time. Now, the biggest pro in all of this, apart from the money, is that this is a bipartisan issue. This unites Republicans and Democrats, and that's something I value very, very, very highly because the pendulum pendulum swings, the political pendulum in the United States swings, and um, you know if you do hyperpartisan stuff, the pendulum will crush it at the next swing. So you need to find unifying uh, issues, and nuclear is a unifying issue. And then the final con is it takes a while. It's obvious. I mean, it's going to take five to ten years before we can build a lot of these. And in the meanwhile, that doesn't mean that we mustn't pursue them. It only means that we need to pursue them and also do stopgap measures. Cut carbon emissions. Build a couple more boiling water or pressurized water reactors. You know, build some wind farm somewhere. I mean, I'm not a fan of wind farms, but do it if you if you feel better for it. Build some solar panels somewhere. But we have enough stopgap stuff that we can use to bridge the gap. So let's do it. Now that's all I wanted to say. Tomorrow I am going to uh, to uh, address this article here, which was written by Joe Rom, 
who is a rabid anti-nuclear writer. I mean, he wrote it on Think Process, Think Progress, which is some kind of hyper-partisan web page. So I don't like it in the first place. In any case, thank you all for watching. Have a nice day. And remember, I, I will put this video up not only on my own uh, channel, I will also put it up on the fourth generation blog channel. So yeah, there's that. In any case, thank you all for watching and have a nice day. Bye-bye.